Welcome to Rich Conversations. This is another one of our weekly guided reflection sessions where we're going to take about 40 to 50 minutes out of our day to just simply think more about our own lives. I'm going to pose some simple questions that are meant to get us to think just more like personally about what's going on in our lives and what we want to be doing moving forward, actions we can take, habits we want to be aware of, a whole bunch of good stuff. And we're going to start with five minutes of breathing. So let's set the timer for five minutes. Begin. Now all we're going to do here is just sit, close our eyes. We want kind of a straight posture. Sit on a flat surface and uh, breathe in and breathe out. We're just going to do this for five minutes. If thoughts come to your mind, just let them pass. They're not important right now.
All right. So that was five minutes of breathing. How do we feel? I feel pretty good. Like for me, uh, it was really helpful because I was just uh, working out before this. Something I do on the farm is flip tires <laughs> for exercise. And uh, it's the evening. I'm recording this in the evening. And then I uh, took a shower right after and then straight to this. So I, I feel, you know, just need to recenter a little bit because um, we have a lot of energy. And our body feels really refreshed. Um, let's begin this session with the same question we always ask ourselves to start these reflection sessions. What are we grateful for? Yeah, it's going to get dark soon, so I want to uh, record this. What are we grateful for? There are infinite things to be grateful for. What's something that comes to your mind regarding this? Gratitude. Start there. Just <laughs> gratitude. Gratitude, patience. Um, it always helps center us with our day, the moments. It's really like a like a well of. great and right energy moving forward. We can always kind of go back into that well when we're thirsty for grounding. Uh, the second question, what's the best dessert you've had recently? This week I've, I've had a uh, couple of things. That just uh, make me grateful for, for dessert and people and experiences and moments. <laughs> Last night, I, I ate ice cream at Culver's, frozen custard, vanilla. And it's the first time I've eaten at Culver's all summer. I've been back uh, on the farm in rural Wisconsin and... I often just hear about Culver's all the time and I'll like go past the Culver's and the parking lot is filled. You look at McDonald's, there's hardly any cars. Here in Wisconsin, Culver's is really, really uh, stepped up as far as its um, significance or its popularity even, which we could, you can certainly see some economic factors and dynamics in play as you know like fast food fast casual seem to kind of the prices seem to be getting similar and if they're going to be similar you're going to take probably a higher quality um, over not as high quality anyways two scoops of vanilla frozen custard last night excellent it's like it was, <laughs> it's really good Oh, man. The other thing, uh, we had a family dinner, and there's some 
peach crisp. Some vanilla ice cream. Not Culver's vanilla, but it was pretty good too. And I've just been thinking about how desserts can kind of signify something special in our lives or, or people we're spending time with. That's cool. So what, what are some recent times you've really enjoyed dessert? Who, who were you eating the desserts with? What was the context? What was going on? Maybe, maybe we have a tub of ice cream and we're watching a movie, just eating out of the tub of ice cream. What was the context of that? How good did that taste? How did it make you feel? Bought this uh, Reese's Pieces ice cream today. I haven't tried it yet, but I'm looking forward to it. Reese's Pieces, so that's, that's a pretty good candy, in my opinion. I'm less chocolate and more pro, like, um, kind of gummy and kind of fruity flavors. Licorice. Licorice is my jam. Uh, Twizzlers Bites. I really like that. Pull and peel. I like the, the licorice kind of category of, uh, uh, you know, kind of like fruit snacks or like, uh, you know, stuff like that. That kind of texture, that kind of flavoring. Okay, so this next question Let's think about nature. When was the last time you observed something in nature that made you smile? For my example, in the, uh, the farmhouse studio in the mornings, like I'll look down from my desk and in the mornings there are just, there's a party of small birds in the yard just really exploring the grounds, um, really talkative, really chatty. It looks kind of like a search party and they just kind of go from like one end to the other end and it, there's tons of birds. And, um, you know, throughout the rest of the day, the birds don't behave that way or they're not doing that. They're not performing that search for food or worms, whatever they're doing. And it just, it just kind of made me smile because just nature doing its thing. And, um, you know, it's interesting. Or the birds will come at different times when the cats are still sleeping. Well, I think that's a variable of it. I think cats are sleeping in the morning so there's not as much of a threat um, from a predator, so they can be a little bit more active, a little bit more um, free in a way. So what's, what's something you've observed in nature that just made you smile? Just like something, something really little like that.
The next question, think back to a recent moment where we've met up with a friend. That moment when you met up with them and you like saw each other again or talked to each other initially to say, hey, hey, you know, greeting each other. How, how did you feel? You know, so how did you feel from going from being alone to now with a friend? A loved one, whatever it may be. Um, someone you care about, someone who like, um, you love or, or you feel like yourself, you can just be. Like, so how did that, that feel, that initial greeting and that moment of going from being alone to with someone else, to being social? What was the difference in how your body felt? Think about that. And then think about it the next time that you meet up with a friend or a loved one. You know, so is there a clear difference between us moving by ourselves versus with someone, you know? Was there a feeling of just relief? Was there a feeling of energy? I would say, was there a feeling of like anxiousness <laughs> or... Uh, zapping of energy, but we were talking about positive, positive experience with it. Next question, when was the last time you thought to yourself, I'm having fun? So in, in something you're doing, something you're working towards, 
Has there been a moment recently or, or in your life where you thought to yourself, this is fun, I'm having fun, and you feel completely absorbed in the moment and the activity and what you're doing? What was that that you were having fun at? And how could you follow it more? How can you take that feeling, acknowledge it, be conscious of it, and pursue it more, follow it? You know, what avenues could we explore this more? There was something that came up in conversation recently with a friend, and I think that's when you know. There's like a... It just feels right. It just feels right. Um, that's what I think with like relationships too. When it feels effortless, when it's just like you can feel it. It's so fun. You know, uh, you know, when was that last time you were just doing something and you thought to yourself, I'm having fun. This is fun. It's a beautiful shot. <laughs> when was the last time you watched the sun set? That's our next question. You took time, you sat down, and you just watched the sun go from where it is to setting past the horizon where you can no longer see it. When was the last time you did that? What was that experience like? Where was it? You know, like taking time out of the day or the moment, like pausing or intentionally setting yourself in place to view it. And that's what you did. You chose to watch the sun set. Not you're doing your thing and then you look, oh, that's cool. And then you look back saying wow look at 
Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? It's so beautiful. Isn't it amazing how each day the sun rises and it sets in the east and then the west? At different times throughout the year, you know, summer compared to winter, fall, spring. We had a full moon recently. I just pee outside, just stare at it. It's pretty, pretty magical. I think it's really interesting how before modern society, the modern world, and electricity and you know, people look at the sky a lot more, I think. And I wonder how, how much we're connected to the actual moon and it affects our, our like physical beings. Like out in the country, when it's a full moon, it just lights. You can see a lot. So I imagine in like the, the Middle Ages, there's a full moon. Like everybody wants to be out. Like a celebration. So it probably leads to a little bit more mischievous behaviors and activities. Maybe, I don't know. The next question, what's something you could do today instead of putting off to tomorrow? I had a conversation with a friend uh, yesterday. I was in Chicago. I uh, went from the farm to Chicago, same day, and then came back uh, from Chicago to the farm. And we were on a, a rooftop downtown uh, handing out. And I don't know how we got to talking about it, but. This particular friend is in some very like high financially successful circles. And he was telling a story about um, a certain individual. <laughs> who like com who commutes every day from uh, Seattle to San Francisco on a private jet. But he was talking about his like previous work that he did. And I asked him what consistent traits come up with the highly successful, financially successful people that he knows. And his response was that they're very hyper focused on the task at hand. There's very little distraction. They look at like each individual item and 
just do it. They do it. It doesn't matter if it takes 15 minutes or 15 hours. If it needs to be done, they do it. And so over and over and over again, they just keep doing what they need to be doing. And um, he said they don't overanalyze as much. He said there's a, a lot of stupid people that are able to be financially successful because they're not thinking about everything. They're quite dumb. <laughs> He's like, but they lock in and they do what's in front of them. Um, so I found that um, enlightening in a way. And I thought about my own, like, what have I been putting off that I could get done right now? You know, it's the overanalyzing, the pursuit of perfection that creates an obstacle for us to get to where we want to go. Um, so what's something we could do today instead of putting off to tomorrow? Overanalyzing, overthinking, um, decision fatigue, paralysis. Yeah, it can really um, prevent us from making progress, from moving forward. To be thinking about that, and it doesn't have to be in a financial sense, but in life, you know, it could be working out. I talked with my grandma, <laughs> and it's funny how we, we never say we won't do something. We'll just do it tomorrow. We'll just do it next week, <laughs> you know? Um, you know, like working out can be something like that, right? You don't feel like working out right now. So we tell ourselves, well, tomorrow let's work out. You know, that'll be, you know, we justify it in our heads and whatever. When we could just work out right now. We could just like suck it up and just do it. And... Um, I think those are some, some good traits is being able to lock in, kind of take some of those, the overthinking and the over emotional part of it and just having already identified, okay, I need to do this, like do it. Today, could have told myself, we're not gonna flip tires today. We could have come up with many reasons, but we're like, no, we're gonna flip some tires today. It's amazing how good the body feels. It just feels like refreshed, especially after like, and you take a cold shower after. I've been really into cold showers this summer. It's hotter outside, but also I've been drinking caffeine much less so I kind of need that little, <laughs> that little punch, punch in the face, <laughs> get me going. Oh, such a great conversation though. Nothing like being on a Chicago rooftop, sipping on old fashioned, overlooking the city, most of all being with a friend, someone you really appreciate and respect and um, enjoy their company. Those are the best. The friends are so fun. Friends are fun. Um,
This next question, what's something we've done recently or something we can do coming up to just add to um, a group we're in, whether it's family or community or friends? Like what's something we can physically provide in a way? A gesture of, okay, we see a need, what can we do to fill it? We're out here on the farm, and um, something we've been lacking here for our, our fire pit is kindling um, and just like smaller wood. We have uh, logs of wood, but not necessarily like kindling and smaller stuff to get fire started right away or uh, newspapers. So I got a tarp and collected a bunch of twigs and then put them aside and now it's covered, it's right there. And uh, so now, whenever someone wants to have a fire, there you go. You can start it real quick. You don't have to go searching for smaller pieces of wood and twigs to start the fire. You got, we got something already here. So what's something that you've provided recently or something you could think about adding to make something better? And you can apply this too in your community. You know, what's a skill or a service or um, something to donate to, you know, an overall more collective group of individuals? Next question, what are we curious about recently? And I know I ask this question a lot. It's because it's my favorite. <laughs> In addition to what are we grateful for? There's like three consistent questions in here. What are we grateful for? What are we curious about recently? And what are we energized for this upcoming week? That will be our last question. What are we curious about?
What am I curious about recently? I'm curious about a, a few different things. I'm curious about results I'm going to get with something I'm going to test soon. Um, I'm curious about the fall, you know, and the activities, the things we're doing, what, how will they um, turn out? My life right now is very open-ended. And um, it's pretty wild. It's like the most open-ended my life has ever been. We don't necessarily know what life looks like a month from now, two months from now. All we know is like we're just going with the flow and going in a certain direction. Um, and I think that's pretty rare. I think most people are fixated on the security of knowing exactly what life is like right now and then and in the trajectory. Mine's pretty wide open and so that's um, interesting. Infinite possibilities. Infinite possibilities. All right, so last question we're going to finish on is what are we energized for this upcoming week? You know, what's something um, that we can be doing next week that is going to give us more energy or, or something we're looking forward to? Just always kind of keep that in mind so that, that our lives don't get flat. And you're just going through the same routine and process all the time. Routine isn't bad, especially if you enjoy a routine and, and it helps you function and be effective. But I'm thinking more so it's just like in life and experiences and growth, mostly about growth. Um, you know, what, what, what is something that will bring you energy? Is there something coming up that you're going to have fun with? Fun is so underrated. It really is underrated. I feel like so much we're encouraged to like not have fun, you know? <laughs> Put your head down, you'd be working. And um, I don't know. There's a lot to fun. There's a lot of value and fun. But you can't, that's the thing, you can't have fun all the time or else fun, the pleasure, is no longer pleasure. It's torture, it's misery actually. So it's like moderation and, and the it's like scarcity of it. You just gotta like, you know, configure it. It's a beautiful summer night. Well, that wraps up our weekly guided reflection session. This has been session 30 and thanks for being here. I'm grateful you're here with us and you're taking time out of your day because you find value in growing as a person, as a human being, an individual, as someone who can be more effective in helping their community, their friends, their family, the world. Um, 
it's important. And again, just one session like this, it's, it can help. But what we want to do is develop patterns and, and thought processes, like processes in our thinking that we can kind of groove where we have like kind of a operating system to work with, but like a high level operating system um, with our minds as we approach the world. So thank you again for being here. We'll see you next week. Inspire the future. <laughs>